All right, men, welcome back to YouTube. I am wanting to discuss something that I think is very prevalent within men. And it's one of the things that I struggled with a lot and still struggle with, to be honest, in a lot of different ways. And that is acceptance, right? And when we talk about acceptance, we have to understand that men are not very good at accepting bad things. We're not very good at accepting good things. We're not very good at accepting compliments. We're not very good at accepting anything very well. And gifts are another thing. We struggle with accepting all of these things in our lives. Most of you don't feel really good about. And the reason why this becomes a problem is because when we fail to accept all of those things, these little things, these insignificant things, when we fail to, to accept those things, simple facts, right? We, we, the simple fact of bad news, right? Somebody we loved was harmed or injured, or the simple fact of good news, somebody's very appreciative of something we did or something good is happening to somebody else. Whatever it is, when we can't really accept these insignificant kind of things within our lives, it's very hard for us to accept the things that we do in our lives, which is the positive things that we do. And in turn, we also struggle with accepting the bad things that we do. Um, we want to defer a lot of this into expectation. So it kind of um, deteriorates the value of accomplishment. And I'll get into that in a second. And then we want to go into self-criticism or victimhood when it comes to not accepting the bad things. And the reason why this becomes incredibly important is because no one, no person in general, but mainly, you know, speaking to you men out there right now, nobody can really take ownership of their own lives until they start to accept all of the things within their environment and ecosystem, right? Like those are things that you have manifested and created within your life through your words, your actions, and your thoughts, okay? So when we talk about this, we have to really come to terms with this acceptance piece. And it's one of the ones that we have, we find the hardest because it takes a lot of self, you know, introspection for us to really evaluate how it challenges who we believed we were as a man. And then it also takes away the ability, it strips us of the ability to kind of defer that um, ownership to other things and, and avoid kind of reconciling it within us internally and acknowledging the fact that we were the catalyst for good or bad and then create some form of change or uh, sustainability of that process, right? So it's kind of like twofold because the sustainability, if, you, if it's something good, you want to continue to do that. If it's something bad, you want to see how you can change. So all of this, I say all of this because it encompasses the big conversation that we have. And that big conversation is, guys, if you cannot take ownership of this stuff, you're never going to take ownership of your life. And not only that, you're going to pass on something negative to the next generation. If you have kids, um, you're also allowing other people to see you in this light and think it's okay for men to do this and then give them permission to do it as well, especially other men who look at you potentially as a leader, right? So all of these things play a role in our lives and you can shake your head and you can think that you don't do this, but pretty much I can guarantee almost every guy listening to this right now is part of that problem, me included, right? I had a very hard time accepting a lot of the things in my own life. I never accepted good things, right? I would never acknowledge the good things and accept that I was the one that created them. I'd always defer it to something that was expected of me or somebody else's involvement or some external things involvement, right? That allowed that to happen. And then on the flip side of things, when it came to negativity, it was, oh, if I mess something up, or something bad happened in my life, it either became the victim, right? So external external people, external things came into play that caused that to happen. It wasn't me. Or it was the fact that, you know, I uh, didn't want to accept that I could not complete something to a standard in which I desired to complete it. And then something bad happened, right? Or I didn't take the opportunity to do something earlier, knowing that if I did it later, it was going to have severe consequences and potentially cause bad things, right? So 
All of that is what I've had to go through. And I know a lot of you men are doing that as well. And when we can get through this and we can start to really acknowledge the acceptance piece of things in our lives. And it's why I really focus on this because it, it, when we can acknowledge this, we can not only become stronger men, but we allow ourselves to not have any excuses of why we are where we are in life or why we behave a way in which we behave. Right. So this is where it's full acceptance of what has taken place, which allows you to then take ownership of the ability to change or sustain a certain action, behavior or way that you handle things. Right. So all of that, it's it's a two part. Right. You have the acceptance piece as you accept everything in your life. And then the ownership is you take ownership of the process or the ability to change. Right. And this all plays into the roles of how we are perceived as men. If we can sit there and take that acceptance and show the world that that is okay for us to do for good and for bad, right? So when we show the world that that is okay to do, we start to allow them to see that they also do not have the ability to defer any of this stuff outside of them. You also give yourself the ability to acknowledge the good things that you do in life. And this is the bit, in my personal opinion, this is probably the biggest advantage of this acceptance mindset. And that is you can allow yourself to say, wow, I fucking accomplished something, right? Like I did something and I was the one that created that. And it was because of the fact that every day I came and did something, you know, to progress myself to the overall goal. Or it was the fact that, hey, that day I was dialed in, I was focused, I knew what I wanted to get done and I crushed it. And the good things that happened after that were because of, were the byproduct of me doing that. Or if you sustain a habit, you build a new good habit in your life and every day that habit being put into place ends up manifesting good things into your life, you allow yourself to say, wow, I did that. I chose to put that habit in. I chose to rip out a bad habit that wasn't giving me any benefit. And I chose to put this new habit in. And then in that new habit, I started to cultivate good things in my life. That is what I am responsible for. And so when you have that ability, you start to build up your confidence because this, guys, is a big thing I get asked questions all the time on, which is how do I get confidence, man? And it's like, it's not a one trick pony. There's no fucking hack to this. There's no coach that's gonna tell you like how you can do this within 30 days. It's impossible. It's only dependent on you and it's the small actions. Now a coach can give you the ability to say, hey, here's kind of the guidebook to finding that, but here's the, the hurdles that you have to get through. This is one of them, that acceptance piece to then ownership, acknowledgement, and then development is where we can get that confidence. We can start rolling with it. That's how we actually start to put ourselves in a place where we start to believe we are at this high standard. And part of that is accepting the bad things too, or the things that we perceive as negative, right? Man, I fucked up. That was not the outcome I was looking for. Vocally accepting that, even and if there's other people involved, letting them know you're accepting that, accepting your role in that is huge because then you're making that connection of saying, hey, now, okay, I did fuck that up. They all know, I know, how can I adapt, overcome and change the outcome the next time? Or how, what can I learn from this for my life in the future in general? If it's a one-off project thing that you may never come up in your life, there's something you can pull and learn from accepting the fact that you were the catalyst for the outcome that was not a positive outcome and then allowing yourself to adapt. We're fucking human guys. Like this is just kind of our responsibility as men, but also as human beings is to say that we are not perfect. That's kind of the whole thing of life, right? Ex exploration. It's a beautiful thing. You get the ability to quote unquote fail, but you also get the ability to have massive success and you get to own both of them one in the same. So you can't sit there and accept failure and then criticize yourself and then not accept the positive accomplishments that you've created in your life and vice versa. You can't accept the positive accomplishments and not accept the negative and fails and the failures in your life. 
You can't have one without the other. When you can learn to balance both of these in your life, you are starting to make yourself a complete man because with that ownership, with that acceptance and ownership of what you can do to improve or what you can do to sustain, that's one of the things that makes us good men in this world because it humbles us, right? It not only empowers us and gives us confidence, but in the same time, it humbles us because it reminds us that we have the ability to also fuck up. We have the ability to not do everything perfectly and we have the ability to also adapt and overcome things. And all of that is incredibly important for how we live as men. And so if you want to have that strength as a man, you want to start building that confidence, then get to this acceptance phase. Start to be somebody who can accept all of that in your life and accept your role in that and accept the fact that you are the catalyst that is inclusive of your mind, it's inclusive of your thoughts, your habits, your words, all of that, all right, and your actions. You are the catalyst for this, and it doesn't matter what, you know, what outcome or who else is involved, remember that you are responsible. And the reason why that's important is because the fact that at some point, and I promise you in every situation, at some point, you questioned doing something different than the way that you did it. And you made a choice as to what you were going to do. And what you did then after that followed on with, you know, actions that other people did or prompts that had other people do certain things, right? And then all of a sudden it created an outcome and that outcome is either good or bad, right? And so when you see that, you say to yourself, okay, you're right. I could have, I could have, I'll give you guys an example of this. Uh, you know, last night my, my wife tells me, she goes, Hey, I need you to set up the mics for this podcasting, podcasting session that I'm doing with Adam. I said, okay. And, and I was leaving this morning to do a photo shoot. She goes, okay, well set that. If you can set that up in the morning, that'd be great. And I said, all right, whatever. So I get up in the morning, I do my morning routine. I start getting into my work day and doing things before I had to go out to do this photo shoot. And lo and behold, I didn't go in and set up the mics, right? And then all of a sudden when I went to go do it, it was at the last minute. And at the last minute, I couldn't do it because her computer was having issues with registering both mics. I was pushing up against my timeline to get to the photo shoot. I was in late for my photo shoot. I was rushed. I was frustrated with her and I was rushed and all of that. But who was the problem in that? It was me. Now I could have come upstairs last night and done it. I could have gone in there first thing in the morning, grabbed her computer, put the mics on and then did all the conversion and everything, redid everything and been fine doing it. But at the end of the day, I didn't. And I could have made all of those choices and I chose not to make those choices. So just remember that is acceptance on my part for a negative outcome that wasn't helpful to my wife, but it also wasn't helpful for me either because it set me back in my morning. And I had to sit with that and be like, okay, I accept the fact that that was my role. Next time that happens, what did, what did I learn from this? How can I adjust that? What's a good way for me to say, all right, how can I change that in the future to where it benefits both of us? And I do this in a better way in which I'm not negatively impacted, rushed, or late for something that is important that I need to get done. Those are the ways that we can do this, guys. That is a real-time example. Literally just happened. And I wanted to share that with you guys because of the fact that this stuff happens every single day in our lives. If you're pissed off about how your day is, uh, if you're having a shitty day or a down day and you're pissed off at the end of the day, like, wow, I, I got nothing accomplished. Um, you know, it really sucked today. I was just lethargic, all these things. Think about what you could have done differently to start the day. What mindset did you enter with? What was the pattern that you had the night before you before your your uh, your sleeping habits, right? Like your your bedtime habits before you went to bed. What was it that you did that could have affected the way you woke up? And then from that, how did you wake up with your mindset? Did you put something in place, or did you just roll over, grab your phone, start getting scrolling, you know, media and everything else? And then not allow your brain to actually have its own time and then adjust to the rest of the world, right? So like, what was the process that you did? And at the end of the day, if you are feeling unaccomplished and you haven't done something and you feel like, wow, I feel like this is a wasted day. First off, just remember it was the day that you needed because for whatever reason, this is how it worked out, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is take responsibility. Yeah, I didn't do anything. I fucking sat back and I, I didn't do shit and I set myself up for failure. What can I do right now to feel accomplished by the end of the day? 
make that choice, make the change, and then accept everything that's happened to that point and then take ownership of the process. I hope you guys enjoy this. This is a very good tool. It's something I utilize every single day. I promise you I utilize this every single day because this is not a fight that you inherently just win. It is a conscious aware fight that you have every single day that you end up having to understand you are having a role in this and taking responsibility of it allows you to expand your awareness of who you are as a man and then how you can make the changes that you want. So. Hope you guys appreciated this and I will see you all on the next one.